Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I've been playing The First Descendant for the past week since its release. I put in more than 40 hours into this game so far. I completed the entire main campaign and I play some more after that. Just to get a good feel, just to get a full picture of the game before I make a review. And I have some strong feelings about this game. So I'm going to put it out there to the public. Hopefully it does some good. Hopefully my perspective helps you out in your decision whether you should dedicate time and or money into this game. So we're gonna go over the good, the bad and the ugly. And yes, there's a lot of bad and ugly in this game. And uh, we're gonna go hard on this game. I'm just gonna be upfront about it. We're gonna go hard on the company behind it. And I think it's fair game. It is fair game when you purposefully design a game this way. So we're gonna go over it. Let's start with the positive. Number one, the gameplay, the shooting is good. I liked it, I really enjoy it. That is probably the second highlight I would say about this game. Also the characters, their abilities, they're pretty unique. They were pretty fun to use, particularly Bunny. That is a character that you're able to unlock throughout the first part of the campaign, which I'm glad they allowed that character to be unlocked quite easily because I think it is one of the more fun characters. Another positive are the graphics, although I do feel like this advantage that the game has in the visual aspects is going to be short-lived because a lot of upcoming games are going to be using Unreal Engine 5, so it might have an advantage in that area, but in a few months, a lot of games are going to be under the same engine, so. The next positive was the Colossus fights, the big monster fights. It was pretty engaging, it was actually fun. I really enjoyed those fights. I think that was the one aspect of the game that I enjoyed it the most. Even though, those fights, they don't have a lot of mechanics at all, really, honestly. It's just you getting the right mods for defense and for attack, and then just do as much damage as you can to the monster before the monster kills you or the time runs out. And that was pretty much it. No particular complex mechanics or anything. Just shoot and destroy, with the exception of this last boss called the Hangman, that it had actually some mechanics in it. However, uh, everything kind of just goes downhill from there. The only reason that kept me going, kept me playing through the campaign was the curiosity of each of those Colossus fights. But the journey to get there to each of those fights, the missions, the campaign progression, all that stuff was extremely mind numbing and dull. Basically, you do the same activities, the same mechanics, I would say a little over a handful of mechanics spread across eight larger maps. And each of those maps is then subdivided into four to five different zones. So you're basically doing the same activities across 30 to 40 sectors. Uh, it becomes repetitive pretty quickly. And unfortunately, this game seems like it's designed with that on purpose. I guess this is just that type of game. The microtransactions are some of the worst. And I hear a lot of people saying, well, no, this is free to play. You don't have to buy them. It is optional. Yes, that is true. But your gaming experience is definitely negatively impacted when you're strictly going the free route. And this is what absolutely ruins this game. You can tell every step of the way why this is here, why this is this way. It's because it was purposefully designed around making you give in and pay for items. It was absolutely not designed for you to have fun. This is not like somebody came up with an idea of a cool game, cool mechanics, and they want to make something that is entertaining, that is engaging, that is fun. Absolutely, that was not the goal. You can just feel it throughout the entire course of the game that everything was meant, was designed, hoping that you will give up and just end up buying the materials with real money directly. 
Now, can you get all those items free? Well, yes, the answer is technically yes, but it's just the same as saying, can you get to 10,000 just by saving pennies? Yes, technically you can actually do it. And the company behind this game, Nexon, they are really good at this. This is not a new company. And you could say that they are pioneers in this field. They are huge in Asia. They started making free-to-play games since the early 2000s with titles like Car Rider. They even experienced with monthly fees for a game called Shatter Galaxy. I think it was like a $9.95 per month, a subscription base. And they have made billions with their most successful live service game, which is called Dungeon and Fighter. They are huge. Just to put into perspective how successful they are, their most successful game by 2020 made over $15 billion in revenue. That is more than the box office of all the Star Wars movies. This is how big Nexon is. This is just happens to be the first time that they're making a big splash here in the Western market. They have tried it before to a lesser degree with less success. In many ways, they are innovators in this area. So they know how to design a game that plays into a gamer's psychology and addiction. And this game does this really beautifully uh, from the visuals of the characters and you can tell their outfits to all the resources that you have to get to combine to unlock more resources to then unlock weapons and characters i mean the level of materials to go from one to the other it is kind of genius i mean a bit diabolical but fucking genius they did not make a good game in the sense of fun engagement. They made a really good game in terms of uh, milking, you know, money out of it. Like uh, it's, it's, it's kind of really, really beautiful what they've done it with this game. They are so good at doing these things that they go fined twice for doing dodgy live service practices. The first fine was in 2018 for 700,000 and just again this year they were fined 9 million dollars. Now I know that this review may have gone a little off the rails by talking about the company of the people behind it uh, but I think when it comes to games as a service it is very important to zoom out and look at the picture because the company behind it it almost becomes just as important, if not more important than the game itself, because the intention is no longer to give you a product to entertain you first, but rather milk you out of your time and or money. Because clearly the game quality and the enjoyment takes a back seat here. One good thing that this game has going for it is that it tells you everything you need to unlock an item where to find the materials, even the drop rate of said materials. And regarding the drop rate, I heard a lot of people asking why if it's a 20% chance drop rate, they run the same activity five times, but didn't get the actual drop. I don't know how many people out there are wondering about this, but the drop rate is contained to that single run and not the overall quantity of times that you run that game. Meaning that you could run the same mission 5 times, 10 times, or 15, and each time you get the side of the 80%, which is drop nothing. Now, what is the rate of hitting that 20% after n number of runs on that specific mission? Well, that's something that we don't know. They don't tell you that, so who knows? And that's the thing. The game is very much stuck against you like a slot machine in a casino. So it wouldn't be so bad if they didn't go so aggressive with the microtransactions or the pricing. In any regular single player game, you buy it for $70 and you unlock everything. All the characters, all the skills, all the weapons, etc. You get everything. But in this game, 
other characters their prices that range from a little bit over five dollars to ten us dollars then you also have 60 us dollars to unlock an ultimate character if you want to unlock all your ultimate characters all your characters you're looking at something over 400 us dollars and that is just the characters alone not including everything now can you unlock them just by playing the game yes of course you can but good luck how long it's gonna take you the pricing is definitely very very aggressive here another aspect is colors uh, apparently uh, colors in these games are consumables like in real life if you use a color to apply to a part of your armor it's gone it's used uh, you will have to buy another one another aspect that this game just works against you is the limit of only four players spawning in a single map so unless you have friends playing with you farming with you most of the time you will most likely end up farming alone by yourself because the likelihood of spawning in a map with three other players that are running the same activity as you over and over is pretty unlikely so there is that Again, like I said, it is designed to make it harder for free players to get resources. Another thing that I found this game very interesting is that playing with friends does not make this game more fun. I jumped in with my friend and we just ended up talking about other things while just shooting stuff. Uh, because the game doesn't have any complex mechanics, there's really no need to be in comms and communicate with each other. And I know that there are updates coming and plans for raids or dungeon activities in the future. However, I'm pretty sure it would just be another way to make you farm for resources or pay up. Maybe I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong, and the dungeons are a game changer. Anyway, these are my opinions. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. It's all good. At the end of the day, it's just a game. And look, I don't have anything against the people who actually truly enjoy this game. I tip my hat to you because you have a level of patience that is almost admirable. Now, from my perspective, I feel irresponsible for me to recommend this game in any way, shape or form, knowing that many people will fall into the trap of playing this game out of formal and addiction and not because it's a fun or enjoyable game. Here's how I will put this game. This is a one night stand game. This is not for a long term relationship, it is just too high of a maintenance for what it is. It just requires too much time and or money commitment for what it offers, really. If you have other games that you are playing and you enjoy them, there's absolutely no need to pause them to pick this one up. And if you have extra free time because you finish your games and you're waiting for another release coming up next month or something and you have no movies, no TVs that you want to watch, no books that you want to read, sure, give it a try, get it out of your system. And for the love of God, don't spend money on it. Just let the big whales keep this game going. This game is a little bit of fun in small doses. And finally, if you see anybody, any influencer recommending this game, see if they are part of the Nexon creators. I know that Nexon, they have this whole hub for creators. I see new creators channels with just a few hundred subscribers all the way to a few hundred thousand subscribers. And there are over 3000 of those across Twitch and YouTube, where if you support them, they do get a commission out of what you buy in store. I'm just saying sometimes you kind of have to wonder because there could be a bias in certain scenarios. All right, that is it for the video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe if you like. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.